In the last video from our trip through Pennsylvania, we made a delicious breakfast with the Omnia oven and then drove to Hickory Run State Park. We checked out the visitor center and then went to the Shades of Death Trail, which packs a lot of interesting scenery into a short distance. We spent some time climbing around on the rocks in the boulder field, and then we drove to historic Jim Thorpe. We wanted to have dinner there to end off this very exciting day. And then we got the scamp all packed up because it was time to make the drive to our next location, which was a little less than an hour away, Ricketts Glen State Park. So don't let the weight of the world slow you down. And if you search for the meaning of life, it won't be found. So take your insecurities and leave them all behind. Let's learn to make the most of our time. Before we head out of Moyers Grove campground, I just wanted to give you a quick tour of the bathroom because this was one of the things that I was really impressed with for this campground. It looks more like the type of bathroom that you might find in a KOA. Good hot water, good water pressure, so we definitely enjoyed that. It always makes the camping experience and coming back to the campground nicer. They also have a pool and a volleyball court, which we didn't get to take advantage of, but Overall, they have a, a really nice property and a great location to access things in the area. So we're getting ready to head out right now. We're going from Moyers Grove up to Ricketts Glen, which the nice thing is it's a, a short drive today. It's under an hour, just almost about an hour. Pat's dumping the tanks right now. This was, this was an interesting experience, a different kind of family run campground than what we've stayed at before. We've done a lot of like state parks, county parks, things like that. So what I will say is the, the property is beautiful. On a weekday, it's really quiet here. And I think that was my experience when I stayed at a campground where there were a lot of seasonal people. During the weekday, it gets really quiet. Now I can't say the same for the weekend. I have no idea. Sometimes places that have a lot of regulars will be kind of like party campers on the weekend. That was my experience in the past um, when I stayed at Egg Harbor Lake <laughs> Campground in New Jersey, but who knows. The one thing that I will say though is the check-in process was mm, not smooth. Um, it's, it's very old-fashioned and we stayed at one campground before where you had to call on the phone to make a reservation and that was Starlight Campground in Lancaster and that was fine. We loved that campground. It was great. We ran into an issue with the check-in here where they had trouble finding our reservation at first. Their check-in system or their computer is very old. They couldn't find my name and then I had the paper and we were looking for the reservation number. It, it was a thing and then I had actually mailed them a check because I remember looking for a stamp because I don't mail things very often so I was like do we have a stamp? So back in February, I had mailed them a check to, to hold the reservation and they couldn't find that and I couldn't check my bank account because I didn't have any service here. So it was a little bit clunky at check-in. That got resolved. We're looking forward to our three days at Ricketts Glen, especially because there's so much hiking that we can do from that area. Here we really had to drive and it was a little bit of extra time in the car, like going into Jim Thorpe and doing all the exploring yesterday, but it's a good day. We, I feel like we crammed a lot in yesterday. That's why we were so tired by the end of the day. But um, yeah, looking forward to our, our three days at Ricketts Glen. What I learned from this process is that I have to do a better job of keeping track of reservations and records and payments because I can't assume that I'm going to have cell service to be able to check on something when I get to the campground. I think the contrast of staying at the KOA where check-in is always just a breeze to staying at a family-run campground is just something I need to keep in mind. 
As we got close to Ricketts Glen State Park, we had another challenge to face, which was the very steep grade going into the park. That was one of the steepest I've ever pulled off this. Yeah? I know it was. It was just, like, I was barely getting grip. We were lucky that we had good weather coming up that steep grade, and the Jeep actually handled it pretty well considering how challenging it was. Now, I noticed at the bottom of our camping reservation, they actually do have a warning telling you not to come in that way if you have a really large rig, but going the other way can add over an hour to your trip. The downside of having such a short drive from one campsite to the other is that you end up having a little bit of time to kill in between. So we checked out the visitor center at Ricketts Glen. Not quite as fancy as Hickory Run, but we learned some things about the long history of logging in the area and some of the old tools that they used to cut down the trees when lumber was a big money maker in this area. We also learned about some of the ways that being in contact with nature, especially trees, has a positive impact on your health. Then we headed over to the campground to see if maybe we would be lucky enough that our campsite was open and we could get in just a little bit early and start setting up. During one of the busiest RVing seasons so far, I felt like we were very lucky to get a waterfront site at this campground. So we made it to Ricketts Glen and uh, very happy with our campsite. I couldn't really tell when I booked it online if we were going to have a view of the water, but we definitely can see the lake right out the back here, which is so nice. Very glad that we're here for three nights. It is rather chilly and windy right now. I have my puffy and my extra fuzzy fleece on. It's pretty overcast and the breeze is coming right off the lake, so it's pretty chilly out. I kind of wish our heater was working. That's a whole other thing though. So three nights here, no hookups. Pat is setting up the solar panel so we'll have a little bit of electricity. We couldn't fill up the tank when we were driving around the loop. That particular water filling station was not working. So we're gonna do the old fashioned hand fill where we have our five gallon container. And the Scamp has this nice little hookup in the back where you can just pour the water right into the tank. So that'll be fun. I'm gonna start making some food because I'm pretty hungry. We stopped at the store in between to kind of refresh some of our fruit and vegetables. And it's, it's always weird on moving day. So we had to leave the last place by 12 and then it wasn't able, we weren't able to check in here until three technically. But when we got to the office, it was around two and the park ranger said, you know, if the site's open, you can go in, but technically there's no check in until three. So you kind of end up with this weird time in between that you might not be able to check in yet, but you're trying to just like do things. So it was nice that we got to go to the store in between anyway. And then luckily the other people were already out. So we were able to, to park and get settled a little early. So I'm going to start making some food. We braved the wind and the chilly weather for a little while so that we could sit outside and enjoy our meal with a view of the lake. It really was a very nice spot. But we did notice the other side of the campground was definitely less windy. Kind of cool how this area is like a good hiking, waterfalls, but you can kayak too, swim. It's a lot of activities. A lot, yeah. Fishing. And the sites are pretty secluded depending on which one you get. Yeah. Even for waterfront. Seems like you can kind of make do with each site to get, you know, have your little nook, your little own area. So this would be our pick if we were camping with the kayaks. <laughs> this site right here, really nice. You're on the end, you got the water, and then here's where you throw in the boats. You throw so you might get a little traffic, but not a good too spot. much. Yeah, it can't, yeah. can't be too much. I think they said the cabins are open in the winter. That would be really, yeah. really neat if they have heat. I wonder if they're I like have, yeah, the ones in Delaware. Maybe we'll do this next winter. Our uh, 
maybe our yearly New Year's Eve trip. There you go, mega tradition. It's uh, still pretty windy outside, so we decided to come into the camper. We showered, which was pretty good, pretty hot showers. And I was like, well, kind of on a roll with cooking, so I made breakfast for tomorrow. These little egg muffins with, I put some puff pastry in the bottom, and I think they came out really well. And then it's just eggs, onion, tomato, and a little bit of cheese. So that'll be breakfast before we go hiking, get some calories in. But I decided to make the meal that I was actually going to make for my birthday, but some of the tomatoes and spinach are probably not going to make it. So I'm doing it tonight. This is what's happening in the Omnia right now. This deliciousness. I wish you could smell it. It smells awesome. So this is just cherry tomatoes cut up, three cloves of garlic, some olive oil, and I put a little bit of cayenne pepper because I like a little spice to it. That's it. So then we kind of go through this two-step process of making the sauce. I'm going to add some goat cheese and wait about 10 minutes, and then we'll add some spinach just enough to cook the spinach, and then we throw that on pasta, and it's awesome. I feel like these tomatoes by themselves would be really good, mm. but then when you throw the goat cheese on, it's when it turns it into like a really yummy cheese sauce, or like a creamy sauce. Mm. Okay, so the goat cheese cooked in, and now I'm just going to throw the spinach on top, and that just takes a couple minutes to wilt, and uh, it will get mixed into the sauce, and then the shrimp will be done, and then we're ready. Okay, once the spinach is like wilted in there, it's good to go. It is so creamy and so flavorful. It's ridiculous. For like just a few ingredients, it's kind of amazing. And I've made this at home in the oven. I feel like you could do it in the Dutch oven too if you don't have an Omnia, but I wanted to try it in here and it came out just as good as when I make it at home. And then you can throw protein of your choice. We put it over, um, we did, what was it? like? lobster and crab ravioli oh, yeah. that was amazing <laughs> um we made shrimp today you could do chicken it really it, i feel like i would eat this stuff on cardboard <laughs> not bad for camping food huh <laughs> not bad for home food yeah i know right that's true i yeah i do make this at home but uh it's nice to have the option to eat in this camp because it is like windy and unpleasant outside you know it's doable if we were in a tent but the scamp just gives us that option of like yeah. being comfortable yeah. and not sitting in the wind while we're eating. So that's nice. All right, let's eat. These uh, egg muffin things and pastry are like my new favorite thing. They are so good. I even burnt the bottom a little bit and it doesn't matter. They still taste really good. <laughs> I'm definitely going to make these again. But uh, this morning when I got up to make coffee, I went to light the stove and nothing happened. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> Our being at its best. Yeah. Something always needs to be fixed. And right before we left, Pat redid all the propane lines because they had dry rotted and we had a little bit of a leak. So he redid all the lines, re-threaded them with that mm -hmm. tape stuff so that there were no leaks. See, everything seemed to be good. Apparently, I went out and checked and the first tank was empty because that was the one that was leaking before. And I was like, all right, like I did a lot of cooking yesterday, like making these. We just switched it over to the other tank, but the other tank also had a leak before so it's not 100% full so we might have to stop and get propane when we're leaving here and going to our next site 
We have a backup. We yeah. have the Coleman stove with like the small propane canister. And I guess I'll have to yeah. maybe scale it back on the cooking a little <laughs> bit for the next couple days. It's funny, usually when we camp for a little while, we like go home a few pounds lighter. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna happen on this trip. Yeah. So now we're just trying to figure out what we're gonna do for today. Pat's taken off the empty propane tank to put in the Jeep just in case we go into town and we can get the other one refilled. I just feel better having a little extra propane. And of course, we switched from our hookup sites where we had electric to uh, dry camping. And that's when it becomes really overcast and we're not getting much solar, but that's all right. We're okay with uh, not having too much electricity for a few days. We can always just use our headlamps and that kind of thing, so that's fine. Yeah, the big question is what we are going to do today, because we had originally planned on doing the big hike of all the waterfalls today, but there's a chance of thunderstorms. So we're kind of like, maybe we should wait until tomorrow, but we also don't have any service, like zero <laughs> on both of our phones. So we can't check the uh, detailed weather. We're gonna have to figure out a better way to, to do that. So I think we're just gonna drive until we can um, find some service, check the weather, and then come up with a plan to see what's the best thing to do today or if we should wait until tomorrow to do that bigger hike. Actually, you can see the, the fog over here. Yeah. So this is the hill that we came in on. We're going down to get firewood because they don't have any firewood at the office. Oh, this poor truck. Oh, you're half the floor. Oh, man. <laughs> He's crawling. Oh. oh. It's doable. Yeah, but... Man, so we saw the sign on the way out. It's an 18% grade, which I don't even remember seeing 18% when we were in West Virginia, and those were some serious hills, but the, the poor Jeep, I've never heard it struggle the way that it struggled on the way in. And then we were looking at the map, and it actually had a, a warning on the map that if you have a larger rig, don't come in on this road, and I could see why yeah. it was. It was challenging. Definitely, yeah. probably the most challenging hill we've tried to come up. The engine was okay to handle it, but I was just worried about maxing out anything that it'll find a weak spot. Or what I was having more problems with with the uh, with the tire grip. Yeah, it was. It actually felt like the Jeep was kind of. It was. It wasn't annoying. skipping, but it was close to it. Because eighteen percent for a half mile going up is. Uh, that's a challenge. Yeah. But I mean, I guess we should be proud of the Jeep because it, <laughs> it handled it. Yeah. So that's pretty good. We're okay. Just a few miles up the road, we stopped at Bear Fuel and they solved all of our issues. We got firewood and they filled up the propane tank. We're just gonna stick to short hikes today. So we came down to the Evergreen parking area and we're gonna do a short loop down here. And then we'll probably go up to Grandview and do another short loop up there. We're just checking out the All Trails app. It makes it so much easier to just pick a trail when the uh, situation changes because we don't know when it's going to start raining or thundering, so we don't want to get too far away from the car or the campsite. But this looks nice. It's one of the last old growth forests. Just a few steps away from the parking area is the lowest of the waterfalls. And it's so interesting to see how the water has carved these pathways and pools into the rocks that it goes over. The Evergreen Trail is a one mile loop that is rated as an easy trail. And it's nice because the upper waterfall trail is a little bit strenuous. So this is more accessible. And along the trail, there are these plaques that teach you all sorts of interesting things about the forest. This is called a nursery log because it is the host to so many different insects and plants. 
and is an important part of the life cycle in the forest. It's also why a lot of campgrounds ask you not to collect wood because they want to leave the wood on the ground to help that natural process. This is a very nice quick hike, a good warm up for tomorrow from the parking area. The waterfall is right there. The downside of that is there's a lot of road traffic because the road is like literally right above the waterfall, but kind of gives us an idea of what we have to look forward to tomorrow when we do the full one. Now we're getting ready for the second short hike of the day. We're, I guess, like halfway up that awful hill. <laughs> so that's nice. There is like a little spot to pull off if you need to rest for a bit. Uh, so it's the shale pit trailhead and we're going trailheads right over here for grand view so it was basically like double track like there's a truck coming up here and then you come up to the fire tower which i bet if it was open and you could go up it would probably be an awesome view but not open so Go down here just a little bit. No view. Yeah, see we're gonna going on. see if maybe it opens up a little bit down here, but really, there's no view. <laughs> Very misleading. That's why it goes sometimes when you're hiking. I know, hit or miss. It's be a dud. Until the next video, go back and check out some of the other travel videos we have on Let New Adventures Begin, or you can go over to my other YouTube channel, Laura G Yoga. <laughs>